Proverbs 31. The words of King Lemuel. All right, now we have another writer of Proverbs. We just had Agar. We had a point where Solomon wrote, but it was copied out, and we have Solomon. Four writers, three authors. The Holy Spirit, the foundation of it all. The prophecy that his mother taught him. So this chapter comes upon what his mother had taught this king. And Lemuel means by God. So here's what she has to say to her son. So if you didn't think women had to say. What my son. What the son of my womb. And what the son of my vows. Right. So she physically is her son. From life, she is his mother. And before, she was a woman of prayer. Like Hannah. Give, and probably all through his young life, she probably prayed and made vows about for him. Protection. Give not thy strength unto women. Do not give power and labor that is of a man to a woman. They are not built for that. They weren't designed. Don't give her troubles and woes and problems of checkbooks and, and you know, being breadwinner of the house. We'll get into that when we next time. We'll get into the virtuous woman. And she's not just a sit along along the house. The Bible states as you read the words and, and the words be. A woman is to have no authority in kingship. She's talking to her son who is the king. She's not to have the power of anything of royalty or presidency or mayor see, governor see, or whatever you want to call. She was to be a help meet to the man, not a takeover. And we'll get into that again with with this virtuous woman. And many are gonna hate it. And I'm just gonna read the word of God. And you got a problem, you got a problem with God, not me and the Holy Spirit. And you can go fight with King Lemuel all you want. Okay? Know thy ways to that which destroyeth kings. Well, what ways can destroy kings? Sin. Leaving God. Pride. Loftiness. Laziness. Many things can destroy a king. Being overbattled by another nation. So it's not get it, not to give the rulership over to the woman. But she's going to have her rulership. We'll see next time. It is not for kings, Olamil. It is not for kings to drink wine, nor for princes strong drink. How strange is that? What was Belshazzar doing the night when his kingdom was destroyed? And what flows through Capitol Hill? I wonder if you were to count all the liquor stores in Washington, D.C., and compare that ratio to all the churches, even, even bad churches. I wonder what that ratio would be. 
When you take our government, Washington, D.C., what flows more? Liquor or water for drinking? Are there more liquor places being promoted by the money of America in our government as, as in Washington, D.C., or are we helping dairy farmers with, with their production of milk? You ever think about those things? Because this passage says it's not for kings and it's not for the princes. Well, let's put it to America. It's not for the president and it's not for anybody in the House and the representatives and the senators. Least they drink and forget the law. So drinking promotes unlawfulness. Is that an example for our government? And yet our government totally in America is always unlawful. What is the law for the people? If I were to go put a wiretap on anybody's phone and it be found out, I would be criminally prosecuted and sent to jail properly by the law. By the law. And yet, the government does it with its own people and it's passed away. As it's the government that can do it. I can go down into a basement and print tons and tons and tons of money. And it would be considered counterfeit and I would be prosecuted and sent to jail properly. And yet Washington, D.C. countlessly puts out money that's not worth anything. That dollar bill is not worth a dollar bill. They're lying to you. I can be prosecuted to the full extent of the law if I sign my name to a paper and don't adhere to what the paper says. And yet the governments of the world and their peace treaties have failed. And prevert. What's prevert? That's perversion. The judgment of any of the afflicted. Drinking hampers the memory. It hampers the afflicted. When somebody gets killed on the highway because of a drunk driver, does the family that has been involved, the innocent party, do they get all that comes to them? No. And yet I can remember in my time growing up this specific family in Massachusetts of a liquor organization, how they made their money. How certain people would die around this family, and this family has not yet ended up in jail. And yet, there are in our government, the United States, USA, on Capitol Hill that are involved as the management of the making of the CEO of the money state of the booze industry. Yet, when somebody gets cirrhosis of the liver, when somebody gets killed because of alcohol, they are not put on trial. And the places they represent and have business with are also denied to the trial. You know that in America it is against the law for a cop to sit outside on a, on a bar on a Friday or Saturday night to wait for drunk drivers. It is against the law. It's called entrapment. And yet we can stop the cirrhosis of the liver. We can stop the drunk driver. We can, start, we can stop the heartaches of the family. And we had done at one time in this country, we can say prohibition, no more liquor. It's that simple. But we want more tax money and tax money to spend, which we ain't got the money to spend. We got to tax even more. You know, when you look at the deaths from the prohibition and the gangsters and all that, very few were innocent parties. And that happened. 
But most of those that were killed by the by the gangster fight and the bootleg and all that were people who were involved in the illegal business of selling the junk. And now from the roots of that, you call it NASCAR, and you go pay kinds of all bunch of money, watch a bunch of idiots make left-hand turns the rest of their entire life with the beer and the alcohol monograms on the car. You have to have that emblem somewhere on that car. I don't care if you're a Christian. That emblem belongs there of that entire series. Give strong drink unto him that is ready to perish. Lethal disease. Mortification coming. The mortician. To someone who is involved in hospice. That's where you give the, the, the drink to. That's the one. It's a pain reliever. It's actually an aid. Because in 1 Timothy 5 verse 3, Paul tells Timothy, drink a little wine. Every drunk knows that verse. For thy stomach infirmities. You got a guy who's got a cancer and is eating his body away and he's a lot of pain and he's going to die. Give him alcohol. Now, you know, somebody, oh, you know, give wine, you know, don't quote this person, drunk and all, give wine. Are you ready to die? I'm trying to think of one word I can't think of. I couldn't think of this afternoon with death. The Bible says, give drink to him that is ready to die. I don't see a lot of people ready to die. I've seen and read many stories where those who weren't ready to die because of alcohol have died. And wine unto those that be of heavy heart. Oh, they'll, they'll claim that one. Oh, I'm just down. Oh. Yeah, you're just making excuses. That's what all America does. That's why the, the pharmacies are rich. You just make any excuse and any doctor will give you a prescription for whatever you have. And don't tell me because I know somebody in my family that with the doctor that that person had. That she can go in there and anything she wants and the doctor will give her any prescription. And it, I can show you a whole uh, cabinet in the house where it's just prescriptions. And some were only taken for a couple days. It was too big. It was, didn't... There's definitely a pill factory of any manufactured pill you want. But what is a heavy heart? It's right next to somebody who's going to die. It's just not, you know, oh, woe is me. Okay, give me a drink. It's not that. Probably deep depression. Let him drink. And forget his poverty. Extreme poverty. And remember his misery. Misery. No more. You just described a lost man. Who has no hope. And no God. Because David was not in poverty. Now, 
Meshivetheth was not in poverty. Well, he lived down low the bar. Yeah, but David knew who he was. God knew who he was. Those that are of God have no poverty. Oh, you may have poverty on the earth, but not in glory. Misery troubles problems. Have you read what the problems that Paul faced in his life, all the perils? Did you see him turn to liquor? Paul had friends in churches that he started turn away from him. Did you see him turn to liquor? Paul knew he was going to die. He knew he was going to die in executioner's death. Did you see him turn to liquor? How about how bad Jesus Christ, according to Isaiah 53, did you see Jesus turn to liquor? Do you ever read where, where uh, Peter was going to hang upside down, crucify? You ever see, you ever read him turn to liquor? James was killed by Herod. Uh, 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 yeah, um, the Roman government. You ever see him? You ever see recorded he turned to liquor? The Last Supper of the of the, the disciples was wine, new, new, new wine, fresh. So if you want an excuse to turn to liquor, there's a word I keep on wanting to say, and I, I keep I, this doesn't come. It, you're on your deathbed. Terminal. That's what it is. Terminal. You got a terminal disease. Then go and have liquor. You have it to yourself. Not a not a party. <laughs> You're going to die. <laughs> Kids are going, all right, don't stare. That's not the case. Aren't we supposed to live Christ like? Do you, you see all that Christ went through the last 24 hours of his life? Did you see him drink liquor? You know what? You know somebody who's without hope, without God, they're going to drop dead. They got trouble. What, 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 let them have a little taste of eat, drink, and be merry before they die and go into hell. And I'm not, I'm not promoting giving anybody liquor. Don't, don't take it like that. But lost man dies in his poverty and misery. He's going to, he's going to end up in in hell and, and worse poverty and misery. For the Christian, there is no excuse. There is none. Open thy mouth for the dumb. A man can't speak for himself. You speak for him. Rightly. Whether he's rich or poor. Male, female, wife, widow. If that man is right... And you speak up for him. Remember, this is to a king. This is the mother's word to a king. Solomon opened his mouth to, to, to one woman who, whose son needed judgment. Job 29, 15, 16 is marked for this verse. In the cause of all such as are appointed to destruction. Let me tell you two aspects of this verse. There's someone who, who, who is dumb. They're unable to speak. And they're being taken advantage of because of that. You don't let them be destroyed. You step in and defend them for their right, if they're right. Now, if they're wrong, okay, let, let them be charged guilty. But if they're innocent, what is man going to say to God at the great white throne judgment?
You better open your mouth and tell people about Jesus Christ and the saving grace of his blood and the, and the blood atonement of the, of the precious precious Lamb of God which take away the sin of the world. But they have an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. And they won't have to speak to, judge, to destruction, but life eternal. Open thy mouth. And you can stop there for America. Judge righteously. I mean, with the judgment that's going on in this country, sodomites can get married and you got to pay for their health care. And with Obamacare, five to six to seven years down the road when they start getting their sexual diseases. That's a righteous judgment. You say, what's that have to do with judgment? The courts, even the Supreme Court says, you know, hey, they're, they're allowed to marry. Righteous judgment. A few years ago, uh, I'm going to say a word, but I won't. Girl, I don't want to say that, but I'll say that very least, was able to sue her parents. And the court said, yeah, go ahead. The court said, you don't have to have Bible in schools. You don't have to have the court, uh, the, the, uh, the Ten Commandments in the courtroom. I mean, they're only going to make them feel guilty. We are in a day and, a, and an age in America today is right is wrong and wrong is right. Plead the cause for the poor and needy. So what they're doing to us now is they're putting us under insurance brackets that are by law has to be, which, why are all the premiums going up? You know? America is toxicated. She believes that in a couple days, a big fat man is going to come to every house and deliver presents. And even our U.S. government, NORAD, will track Santa. Who, there's no Santa to be tracked. And this is the same organization, the same country. I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to believe you with, with a war in Afghanistan and a guy who had weapons of mass destruction, which he didn't have. And I'm supposed to believe your media and your newspapers when in in four days, weathermen are going to be on on the television telling you where he is right now. And I'm supposed to believe you. And what's every TV program? Ding dong. Oh, hi. Come on in. Want a drink? Hi. Welcome to my house. Get here. Have a drink. It's beer time. Nothing is better than have this junk in your pour down your throat. Plead the cause for the poor and needy. Well, hi, I'm your famous actress. And for a cup of coffee each day, you can send money to Africa. Where for that cup of coffee, they can get... You got U.S. veterans underneath bridges and that have no home and get no medical care. What about them first? Oh, 
Well, somebody gave the Salvation Army. Aren't you so happy he gave some? Uh, the Salvation Army is the foundation of Claire William Booth was to deliver the gospel, not turkeys. Now, you want to make me happy w w with the Salvation Army. Let me go up to one of those dingalingers and ask them what salvation is and have one of them give me the proper answer by the Bible. Then I will cheer after you picked me up and gave me the paddles and brought me back to life. Because I have not found one of your dingalingers to tell me what salvation or the army they're fighting for. And you dumb dingalingers out there, Salvation Army, not even one of your dingalingers know what the booth means. I've tried them. I ask them three questions. What's salvation? You don't know. What army are you fighting for? Well, it's an organization right around the corner that helps people with turkeys and stuff like that. But who are the booths? Well, I haven't met the booths. No, duh. Kind of freaky if you did say you, you met the booths. And then I gotta explain to them and I gotta give them literature about what salvation truly is about. While you dress up in your uniforms and, and, and let women preach and all that defy the Bible. I took care of a lot of poor needy people tonight. Well, really? What'd you give them? I gave them the gospel. That's what I gave them. And I wept in my heart because they rather have other things than the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hopefully somebody in their lifetime, what short time is, will believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I guess you would give strong drink to America. She's dying. She's got a cancer. And she's in poverty. And she's in misery. And down here in Florida, you can find the booze in any store you want. I thank God, and I'll name them. I hope I'm not doing injustice, but I do believe. I'm going to not mention, but I think I'm going to check next store, time we go. I think we are actually going to a store where they don't sell booze. When I go check it out, I'll give their name and praise their name for not having booze. I know they don't have cigarettes. Praise God for no cigarettes. I had a dream last night. I started my own grocery store business. I took all the beer and cigarettes from all the stores that, that I, I took over. And I put them in one nice big parking lot. And I, I, I let the military come in. We threw bazookas and flamethrowers at it. And we had a nice toasty wash marshmallows i'm dreaming of a big bonfire with all the booze and cigarettes i can burn yeah america she's in the booze and according to proverbs 31 it's because she's in poverty she's dying and she's in misery and let her not remember it no more because you wait till god passes a judgment upon her And judgment will come. Listen, it's a great nation, but it's a sin-crad nation. And her churches are failing awfully quick.